Hello, I'm Diane Richard, your host of Let's Talk. I am so very privileged and honored to bring to you one of Pittsburgh's grand dames, an unsung hero, or should I say, Shiro. Although devoted to her career as an award-winning journalist for the old Pittsburgh Press and for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, Jean Bryant found time in 1973 to found the Miss Black Teenage Pageant. The pageant consists of an eight-week program designed to build self-esteem in area young women and to start them on the road to success. The program stressed the importance of education, introduced the participants to successful businesswomen, and awarded more than $400,000 in educational scholarships. A retiree, Ms. Bryant was twice featured in Essence Magazine for her work with our youth. She was also the recipient of the Jefferson Award in 1985, the New Pittsburgh Courier's Woman of Influence and Excellence Award, and the Pittsburgh Black Media Federation's Legends in Journalism Award, as well as numerous other accolades bestowed upon her from various governmental agencies. May I now present to you the infamous Jean Bryant and her incredible story on Let's Talk. Thank you for being with us today, Jean. 
Thank you for having me, Diane. Absolutely, absolutely. You've had such a fantastic life. I'd like for people to hear a little bit about it because you're my unsung hero. Why? Okay. Or should I say my unsung shero? <laughs> oh, okay, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Talk to us a little bit about your career as a journalist. And I'm talking about your career long before you even thought about doing the Miss Black Teenage America pageant. Indeed. You know, it's funny because actually the two just about came together almost because uh, when I did not intend to become a journalist, I, I like to say I fell into journalism. And that's because uh, I was working uh, with uh, uh, George Hudson uh, Associates in New Jersey, and that was a um, public relations type uh, okay. uh, setup, and they needed a manager. So I applied, <laughs> but how they found me was I was actually, I was managing a group called the Soul Dukes. And, uh, Is that a singing group? A singing, a band, a, a band, band. Okay. yes, yes. And uh, my son was the leader of the band and the lead singer. And uh, he happened to attend a concert my sons were playing at, and uh, he liked what he saw. And he said, anybody that can manage a, a male band <laughs> he needed for his office. And that's, that's actually what started me in writing. Okay. But if I wanted to go back further, I'd go back to eight years old. Okay. Because I like to write then. Well, let's take us back there then. Wrote little stories. Didn't want anybody to see them, though. I, I kind of hid my stories. And uh, a cousin happened to find my little stash and was just enthralled reading my little stories. And uh, she let me know that. And, of course, I threw a tantrum because I didn't want anybody reading my <laughs> stories. <laughs> And I understand that a lot of writers today are like that, and uh, they, they don't are. want anyone to look at their work until it's done or until they want people to see it. Correct. But that's how I fell into writing. Uh, I started out as a uh, kid, really, and I liked it a lot. And um, so when I got the opportunity to work in George Hudson's associate's office, I took the job. It was basically PR. Oh, yes. excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. And so... When, where did that take you? Well, that job ended because, well, my boss had uh, become sick, and then we lost him. Okay. And I would have stayed on, but uh, they wanted only wanted me to stay on <clears throat> to train a male. <laughs> so goodbye. <Yes. laughs> I left. Okay. And um, there was an opening at the New Jersey Afro American newspaper. And then there was an, uh, so I went to see about it. But uh, when I got there, they said, well, the job for writing was no longer available, but could I do accounting or anything like that? And I said, oh, sure. Didn't know what I was doing. You'd learn. You'd yes, learn. I did. Yes. I did. And yes. so that's how one day a gentleman came into the office to give me a little feature story about what the police department in Newark was doing for the community there. And I wrote this story and uh, left it on my boss's desk. And the next day or so, we had a delivery of newspapers, uh, because it was a weekly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't say the next day, but shortly thereafter, shortly after. Mm -hmm. the boss came in and he picked up the first delivery, slammed it on my desk, and walked by me. So I'm typing and doing some work. And I look, there's my story on page one. So I got the bug right then. <laughs> one page? One. Page one, okay. Yes, page one. Okay. So that's how I got started. And at the same time, um, as I said, I just became involved with a young group. That was my uh, son's group. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went from there. I started managing them. And it just, everything sort of, sort of melded together. So all of this took place in New Jersey, correct? In New Jersey, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did you then come to Pittsburgh? All right, but first, <clears throat> I um, marriage. Okay. Marriage. I have to think hard about that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the happiest time in my life. Uh, a second marriage. Okay. And uh, I went to Pittsburgh for that, and uh, I wanted to do 
the Miss Black Teenage pageant because actually it reverts back to New Jersey. I did it there as well. It's okay. just so complicated to remember now. But uh, I started Miss Black Teenage in New Jersey. And um, when I came to Pittsburgh through marriage, marriage brought me here, uh, I just continued here. But the thing about it is, when I sought out people about starting one here, I kept hearing, oh, this is a shot in a beer town. Nobody will go for that. And I said, you can't tell me that people in Pittsburgh don't care about their daughters. And much to their surprise. And much to their surprise. And mine. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know, Absolutely. I mean, I really, really wasn't surprised, but surprised that it went over because it was like a um, community that everybody knows everybody. So mm -hmm. I was really an outsider for mm -hmm. a while, for a while. And I understood that. I understood that. But uh, it was such a, an immediate success that I was really floored myself. Excellent, and that, that, mm -hmm. that's so good to hear. That is so good to hear that you could come from another state, come into Pittsburgh and make such an impact on so many people. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So now, as a legendary journalist, you've been the recipient of many, many awards for your journalism. Yes. Share with our viewers some of the amazing and well-deserved accolades that you've received? Well, that's something I don't like to talk about a lot because I don't concentrate <coughs> it, uh, on those type of things. I definitely love receiving them because it, to me, it's like uh, them, the people handing you this wonderful, uh, shiny <laughs> <laughs> sort of form of thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's like love, you know, they're giving yes. you their love. Yes. and showing you in that way how much they love you and appreciate what you've done. And certainly the pageant was a work of love, really, here and in New Jersey, because I think I have to stop and ask myself, how, how did you get into this anyway? But uh, Hal Jackson was a very, very big name in New Jersey and New York. He owned uh, several radio stations, mm -hmm. and uh, his wife, was doing the Miss Black Teenage pageant there. Okay. And um, they had a big one in New York, a big uh, pageant. I think it was the first one, really. And uh, they asked me to be part of it. So I did New Jersey for them, <laughs> not really knowing what I was doing, but it turned out beautifully. So and did you train these other people on how to do it? Well, yes, we had a committee and uh, I had people helping me, but it was something that I was just putting one foot in front of the other more or less. I wasn't following any guidelines, but there was a, a guide. The man upstairs Absolutely. had to be because Absolutely. I knew from nothing. Absolutely. I knew from nothing. Well, you followed your instincts and yes. it was more or less something that we typically do and that's baptism by fire. Exactly. We just get in there and we do what it, needs to be yes. done. Yes. To and the best is. of our abilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. <laughs> that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Now you've had your hands in so many uh, things that have to do with community service for a long time. Tell us your biggest community service project to date. And hint, you contributed more than $400,000 in scholarships to some very deserving young women. And men. And men. Yes. yes. So let's, let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Well, the, the biggest, I would say, I would have to combine the Miss Black Teenage Pageant with uh, the Mr. African American pageant. Well, I don't like to say pageant for the boys, though. Right. We say program. Program, okay. Um, but uh, the idea, first of all, that sort of spurred me really into doing this kind of thing was recognizing the fact that our young ladies needed so much um, tutoring and uh, in, in the ways of trying to be successful. And there were so many um, young ladies in the in the community that had talent, that had had uh, the wherewithal, but mm -hmm. they just didn't have that little extra or the that, opportunity or the opportunity, and that is so true. The opportunity is mostly mm -hmm. what they were up against. Mm -hmm. But when they got the opportunity, did they know what to do with it? Um, for instance, we had uh, cases where not in not my girls, but I knew of cases where young women would be 
combing and straightening their hairs in, in their uh, offices while, on, you know, when they should have been going to lunch. I'm, or, you know, and people yes. complaining about the smoke, <laughs> so yes. to speak, mm -hmm. and things like that that you just don't do. So I felt that... Um, so you taught them etiquette. Etiquette. And, and the main thing that they needed to know, that they were beautiful, that they... <clears throat> They didn't have to measure themselves up against blue eyes and blonde hair. Absolutely. And that, that to me, was what it was all about. Absolutely. First of all, you had to get that pride in yourself, and you had to love yourself. And that's what we taught them. <clears throat> Every first week with the young ladies, it was always a Saturday meeting, and the first Saturday was always telling them, you know, girls, this room has the most beautiful young people in it ever in Pittsburgh. And that's how we started off telling them they were just the most beautiful people in, in, in the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we'd go from there. Then we'd go from there. I think when you say hello to someone, and, and I, I do this myself, um, a person, yes, I do know your name, but I may say, hello, beautiful, how are you today? You know, and it's just a little yes. something extra just to let them mm -hmm. know that, you know what, I think you're beautiful. You know, yeah, I know your name, but hello, beautiful. That is such a good thing to do because that, that word and just the word alone and you're applying it to someone, it, it lifts their spirits. Yes, yes. Because, you know, nobody's telling them that. Correct. Nobody. Correct. We had a young lady in the pageant one year who said she thought she was ugly. And when in the program, we teach them how to come out on stage when their name is called, looking at the audience. She couldn't do that. She'd always look at the wall and come out and on the way out. And oh, I couldn't believe it. But by the end of the pageant, she knew how to look out at the audience Hold her and, head up. and smile. And smile. Mm -hmm. That's so important, building self-esteem in yes. these young women, um, letting them know that they are beautiful, and letting them know that they don't have to measure their worth against anyone else but themselves. But themselves, exactly. Mm -hmm. This is fantastic. Tell us some of the graduates who were part of the program mm -hmm. and part of the pageants, and some of the things that they're doing now. I know that they are actresses and and possibly you doctors yes, and you yes. know just very successful in their lives now very. because of what you've done well you know or I should say in part of what you've done yes because I always like to uh, uh, say firsthand that all it, it, the pageant was has been very helpful to the young ladies and I recognize that but I do recognize that uh, they have these talents, they, they have these innate talents, mm -hmm. and all we do is give them a platform with, their, with the program. And uh, so I don't take a lot of credit, but I do take a lot of pride in what, what they accomplish, though. Amazing. And I sort of go back to what Shakespeare said, all the world is a stage. Yes. So my premise is we give them a stage, so we'll give them the world. Absolutely. And that's seemingly what happens. But like you said, they're, they're just all over the all over the map in these uh, different disciplines. And so you have some, some listed there of? Yes. Excellent. Oh, I, I have to carry these. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's but hear who the they danger, are. danger, though, if you, you m mention someone and you don't mention someone else. So I have to ask forgiveness right here. If I okay. leave someone out, it's not deliberate. But um, just the other day, and, and I'm bringing her up because it was very, very recent. Okay. I was getting my hair done. And this beautiful young lady comes up to me and says, Hi, Miss Bryant. And I'm doing Jatara. And it was Jatara McGee. And I said, What are you doing here? And she said, Oh, well, I come this way because she's out, like, in New Kensington or something like that, mm -hmm. generally. Okay. That was her residence, I believe. And um, she said, Oh, I come here whenever I'm downtown or in town. Mm -hmm. And that didn't make too much sense because I'm sure they were closer. Uh, hairdressers. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, where do you, what are you doing now? She said, well, I live in Virginia now. And I'm going, no, you don't. <laughs> so I said, what are you doing in Virginia? Well, I'm working for a TV station. I'm a, a news reporter. So nice. I mean, I'm Very just nice. like, oh my God, it just 
chills went all over me. I just was so happy for her. One of your babies. One of my babies, yes, okay. indeed. And then we have, so she is the second one. We have Jasmine Rush. And uh, some of these young ladies have given themselves different names or something for Facebook. But I'm just mm -hmm. going back to their names. When the, the, that the, you know, yes. yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so Jasmine Rush is also a TV news reporter. And someone said to me uh, that they saw her. They were visiting Youngstown, Ohio, and they saw Jasmine, and they said right. she's doing very well. So that made me Excellent. really happy. Now, in the ministry, for instance, we have Veronica Williams. She's in Maryland, and Cynthia Swepson Brown, who is here in Duquesne. But there are so many different others. You know, I just hate to just mention one or two. When well, they so know many. it's it, they yes. know it's from your heart. Yes, yes, they have to. Now. In, in the business world, we have Andrea and Jennifer Barber, who opened up a, a studio for teaching piano. Okay. And isn't that wonderful? And where is that located? That is in Green Tree. Okay. In Green Tree. And in education, we have uh, Margaret Starks, who's principal, get that, <laughs> at Miller School. Excellent. Yes, yes. Excellent. And uh, uh, Anita, Anita Anderson, who is uh, a teacher also in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And... Um, she uh, came up with a plan to help uh, seniors um, sort of finish in top shape Good. so that they can go on to higher education. And uh, so we're really happy about that because she got an award for that. Excellent. Yes, indeed. And, of course, we have actresses. Uh, Tamara Tooney certainly comes to mind. Oh, yeah. She, I think uh, that's a very familiar name here yes, in Pittsburgh. Yes, she's I, on CSI. Yes, yes. Um, I did see her in a one-woman show several months ago, mm -hmm. so she's doing well because uh, I think uh, the SUV, uh, what is it called? Um, anyway, that, that she was in is supposed to be going off the air. I'm not sure. They're showing rerun, reruns. Okay. So um, Also, we have uh, Milton Henderson, who's an yes. actor now. He's doing very well. And um, in, uh, let's see. Education, we covered that. I mean, they're just doing everything. Radio, Brian Cook. I don't know whether you know that name or not, but uh, Brian is a broadcaster for uh, Urban Radio Networks. That's and phenomenal. He's just, yes, he's just phenomenal. Doing, yes. So all of these people have gone on to successful higher education yes. and to successful jobs that are self-sustaining in themselves. Exactly, exactly. And you've given them the platform to do that. We we. The encouragement, I like to say. Okay, you've encouraged them encouraged to do them that. To yes. Do these things. Now we also have um, Jillian w Woodruff, who is uh, the daughter of of Dwayne Woodruff and, and, Joy. and Joy. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Uh, there, she's now in Anchorage with her husband. She's married to a doctor, and she's a doctor. Yes. So, it's just too Excellent. amazing. Now we also stress, you know, just being a good community person, you know, marriage and yes. we have young ladies that are getting married. I said, this is wonderful because that's seemingly not the trend these days. Correct. But uh, for instance, one of my fir first uh, uh, queens, Doreen Walker Tibbs, is now married to Eugene Tibbs 25 years. Wow. I mean, am that's I getting older? Get <laughs> no, no, you're just getting better. <laughs> well, okay, I'll <laughs> take that. I'll take that. And Terry Austin, this beautiful young lady here. Okay. Married to Frank, uh, uh, what is their last name? This is terrible. Torbert. Okay. Torbert, yes. And uh, Ashley Connor is married to uh, Dante Comas and Alita Bullock and Rodney Hurd. And when I talked to them, I talked to Alita. I said, Alita, what's married life like now? This was just, uh, I would say, about a year ago. And she said, it's, it's wonderful. And I, I just thought that was uh, so good. It is. And she said, I'm blessed. It I is. Mean, I, it is. To hear these, you know, when you talk about young people, you don't expect, I mean, the way you, the news you get. The, the, the trends nowadays. Yes, yes, um, is, is not that You get good. mad and you leave. Yeah. You don't work through the issues. Right, exactly. Yes. So I think our girls are, in, are getting some good, um, uh, doing some good things. They in are their doing lives. some phenomenal so, things. So proud of them, yes. And that, that's, you, you are to be commended for that because, again, You've given them the platform, you've given them the opportunity, or you've shown them the opportunity, and you've given them the encouragement that's needed. 
And that says a lot. And I wish that we had more people who did that. Not to say that we don't have a lot of people who are out here um, doing yes. just that, because yes. there are a lot oh, of yes, great programs yes. Yes. Um, in Pittsburgh that mm -hmm. a lot of people mm -hmm. are doing to encourage our young people, because you know as well as I do, our young people are in dire need, oh, so, dire so, need of direction. Yes, and times, it, it looks as though there's a trend in our current administration in D.C., Washington, D.C., to turn back the clock, and we don't need that. But the, the, uh, the pride in themselves and this kind of thing, this kind of program is really going to be needed so much even more, you know, Absolutely. because of that. They're, they're going to have to jump some hurdles, you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we need to show our young people, and, and you have done this just tremendously, we have to show our young people hope. Yes. Because a oh, lot yes. of them think that there is no hope and that mm -hmm. what they see inside of the borders of where they live, yes. that's their future. And we have to let them know that that is not your exactly. future. And maybe some things that you've done wrong in your past, you don't have to let that define you. You move forward of course. and better yourself. And you've made a platform for, for the, the people at that point the youngsters at that point, to be able to do that. Hence, you have a list here of people who have gone on to stellar. Oh, yes. They, stellar. Canadian. Yes, there is one young lady I failed to mention in, as a corporate success. She has headhunters looking for her, really, for their offices. She is so uh, in fantastic. Demand. Yes, she's so much in demand. And I'm sorry, I don't have her married name in front of me, but in the pageant, she was... Kimberly McDaniels, just a beautiful, beautiful young lady, just beautiful. And of course, uh, we mentioned Tamara. Uh, Lisa Ruffin is also uh, doing well in California. Good. And uh, we, as I mentioned, Milton Henderson. He always gives credit to the program. That and is that's wonderful. So wonderful. As a matter of fact, Brian Cook, who I mentioned before, um, met his wife at uh, Clarion, and so they, you know, give me credit for their marriage. Absolutely. So they, that's really wonderful. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. And again, your list is not exhaustive of all mm -hmm. of the people that you've, the 1,892 right. oh, people. That's, that's why it's so that, scary just to mention a few because there are so many more. But they know. They, they have they, to know. They know that so. this is from yes. your heart, that, mm -hmm. you know, that you can only name a few, mm -hmm. but you're in their heart. Uh, you're, they're in your heart and you're in their hearts. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. then, you retired yes. in 1993. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And after you retired, you went on, went on to another venture, and you'd mentioned that before. Um and that was to engage the young men in our community. Yes. And by engaging them in our community, you started the Mr. Mr. African American program. Yes. And this was a program for boys nine through 17 years of age. Exactly, yes. What prompted you to go in that direction? Well, I have sons, and I realize what they're up against out there in this world. And basically, both programs, it's just to give them that inner strength and some basic knowledge of what you need to succeed in this world. And for the girls program, we had a, um, uh, what would you call, just a creed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just something to make them realize, that, let's see, what is our confidence, awareness, and pride. Okay. And, they ca and they'll say to me when I say to them, uh, they still remember that confidence, awareness, and pride. And, and uh, we call that wearing your cap. Cap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they'll say, I'm Absolutely. wearing my cap. As a matter of fact, one of our um, volunteers, Gwen Moore, thought that went up. She was a, uh, an assistant mm -hmm. um, with us, and she just came up with some great things, you know, like that. Confidence, awareness, and, and pride. pride. I'm wearing my cap. Yes. I like that. Mm -hmm. I exactly, like exactly. Now, the boys program, we didn't have a uh, creed for, but um, we had a, uh, and I wrote it myself, and I kind of loved it, <laughs> but they had to agree. They had, oh, that was my favorite. I mean, I love the girls, 
but I just miss doing the boys program because um, we had um, just just so much fun with them and making them realize that they didn't have to hate each other, mm -hmm. that they should love each other, and and you know, and when in the time that that we did it for ten years, mm -hmm. and in that time, it was a very bad time out there. And, and what, uh, what years were these? It was, let's see, it started in 1993, and we ended 10 years later. Okay, 2003. So, yes, yes, 2003. Okay. Oh, God. So anyway, <laughs> um, in that time, you had um, a lot of drive-bys. You had a lot of horrible yes. things that the young men were going through. Yes, and uh, the and, drug wars. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I remember once... One young man had uh, dropped from the program, we thought. And then one day I was getting there, parking my car outside of wherever we were because we move around with these programs. Uh -huh. um, and he ran up to the car and frightened me, really. And then he said, oh, Miss Bryant, can I go in? So I said, well, where have you been? And then he told me he had to basically hide out from a gang. Gangs. Was, yeah. Uh -huh. And it was just so scary. And... Uh, I called my son. I said, should I have some kind of thing to uh, check these kids before they walk in? And he said, no, Mom, just run your program. Don't worry about it. So it worked. I mean, we never had to have any special security. Well, because that was an avenue where the young men could come and they felt safe. Yes, yes. You know, and they knew, <laughs> they have learned mm -hmm. who one another yes. is, and they've also learned probably to, to trust. Exactly, and I told that young man, I said, look, you know the rule is if you miss two meetings, you're out. And I said, so, it, but, uh, but he was so desperate just to come back into the program. So I said, well, what are you gonna do for your talent? And uh, well, I'll, he, he said, I'll write something. I said, okay, because he, they can write their own thing and then we, we turn it into a drama. Uh -huh. We teach them how to emote and so he wrote something up, and he did very well in the program. Surprise, surprise, so, right? Yes, yes, he exactly. Need, so that shows me that he needed the he program. Needed, yes, He yes. wanted to be there, but mm -hmm. it appears that at a time in his life, he was frightened, and he, and yes. he had to do what he had to do. Yes, he did, and, and you know, it's so sad. But, uh, but you were the port in the storm. So it seems. So and, it he, seems. and he came back. Yes, yes, and... Uh, I was happy to, that he did come back, and I did hear from him afterwards. I was going to ask yes. you, what is that yes. young man doing well, now? Well, he was working in a restaurant. Okay. But he had a job. He had a job. So I was happy with he that. He had honest money. Yes, exactly, exactly. And that's important. Mm -hmm. yes, that is, that's so important. Yes. So tell us about the program mm -hmm. that you had with them, how your program went with them, and... Um, the impact that it made on those 200? Yes. Okay, on those 200 young yes, men that yes. you molded into adults. Yes, you know, um, the, the program, we didn't call it a pageant, but it was pretty much structured the same as the young ladies. Mm -hmm. um, that, but the thing of it is <clears throat> we had an all-male, mostly, um, teachers for them, lecturers. Mm -hmm. and, and in both programs, the, the important thing was that each year we made we uh, had the young people that graduated, so to speak, from our program, come back and tell the kids what they were doing. They were either in school or they had graduated from school. So they always had role models in both programs. So that mm -hmm. that was one thing I neglected to say at first. But um, the difference in that is that we had men mentoring them, but the women, of course had input as well. Right, right. <laughs> and, and but we, of course, <laughs> the and, mother instinct. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So it, it was really wonderful. And you know what? We didn't ha we only had one incident where someone ate somebody's lunch on oh. purpose. But you know what? The sad thing I found out, and I guess it's safe to say this, that too often the parents of the young men seem to have left them at their own um, wherewithal to, to their do, own doing yeah because they didn't most of the time they didn't have lunches and that was a must mm -hmm. you must bring a lunch and a lot of times our committee 
was sharing their lunches with them because they didn't they bring didn't, a lunch. Or they I didn't what, what, have what, yeah. been able to have a lunch yes, yes. food. Mm -hmm. So we decided in this program that we would meet these children where they were, these young men. Like the girls, we were, were a little tougher on. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can't wear sneakers in this program. You have to either wear a dress or a skirt. And that was the beginning of how you have to approach uh, businesses when you're looking for a job for of, them. Of a certain length. Yes, of a certain, no décolleté. Oh, well, mm -hmm. that was written, no décolleté, and we explained to them what that word meant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... So different from today. Very different. Everything's hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think if I was still doing it, it would still be the same. No décolleté. Absolutely. No Absolutely. sneakers. And the only time we allowed them to wear sneakers was at rehearsal, mm -hmm. at rehearsal, uh, for the, when, just before the big day, mm -hmm. we let them wear sneakers. They had to dress business. Yes, they had to, yes. As if they were going on an interview. Of course. Absolutely. We even had mock interviews for them. Now, we didn't do that so much with the guys. Mm -hmm. We kind of didn't want to scare them off, but eventually they got the message. And as a matter of fact, I was on a radio show with... Um, Elaine Effort. Oh, Elaine. Yes. She just with retired. One my, with one of my <laughs> young men who is now a paramedic, by the way. Um, and he told me, uh, not me, the audience, the radio audience, that the program sort of took the place of the father that was not there. Mm. His father was, um, well, I won't say any more right. than that. You know, he right. was just I understand. not in his life at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, I'm, I'm sitting there hearing this. And so really, that's why I said these programs came from inside. I, did, uh, I just went, uh, I don't know, God sort of propelled me to do these kinds of things because they were so needed. And I, I didn't know he needed, so to speak, you know, that his father wasn't in his life and those kind of things. And it's really, really sad. And uh, these young men, they need guidance. They do. And they need mm -hmm. men in their, li in their lives yes. to show them how to be men. That's exactly why we had these mentors. Uh, <clears throat> we had Ron Saunders, um, Hat, uh, Mr. Hatley, I can't think of his first name right now. Uh, and uh, we always had men coming in to talk to them. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget, we had um, uh, our, uh, he just got involved with the uh, Board of Education. Uh, I can't think of his name, it's terrible. Um, he was a, was he, well, I'm not even going to go there, but anyway, he is now with something in the Board of Education. I don't know if you might think of who that might be I'm talking about, but it doesn't matter because what, one of the young men said when he walked in, I heard him say to his friend, oh boy, I know he's somebody. And the young man that's a paramedic now had written me a letter because he was in it more than once. Mm -hmm. We allow them to come back unless they, if, until they wear the crown. If they wear the crown, then they're not allowed back, but they have to come back as volunteers okay. or to show them what they're doing. And um, so this young man who had uh, come with me on his show and revealed that his father wasn't in his life had told me, had written me a letter and said he had never seen a man in a suit before. He came into the program. Oh. I could not believe it. Ooh. He was only 13. Ooh. When he wrote that letter, mm -hmm. so he came wow. back another year, and then he had uh, become a paramedic when he left the program. And then yes. he had an opportunity to see a lot of men in suits. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this young lady. Yes, her name is Terry Austin. Now Torbett. Okay. She is our queen. What year is that? Um, she was two thousand. If I can. 2002. 2002. But she is now married, and uh, she never expected to be able to go to college because we, our scholarships were four-year scholarships. Mm -hmm. And uh, once they went to the school, because we were fortunate that one of our other young ladies had gone on to Clarion and had worked in their um, office and sort of um, 
hooked us up together with okay. Clarion to uh, increase their diversity. Mm -hmm. Her name uh, is Tracy McDonald, and she's now a judge in Washington County. Excellent. Who did that? Excellent. And so, because of her, we had these four year scholarships for anyone who was available, and uh, she was one of them that got them, got one. She got a four year scholarship, and uh, she said that was a dream come true for her because wow. she had never expected to be to college, wow. be able to go to college. And, yes. and you've afforded these young men and women the opportunity yes. to be able to yes. go to school. Mm -hmm. Hence that $400,000 in scholarships that you were able to give out because mm -hmm. of this amazing, amazing endeavor. Yes, exactly. This is wonderful, yes. Jean. This is mm -hmm. wonderful. And also, okay, <laughs> you have amassed numerous community service awards, too many to mention, yes. but you've Lifetime Achievement Awards. You've been written up in Essence Magazine twice. Twice, yes. You've gotten citations from the then Pennsylvania Governor Tom Ridge. Yes. From Representative Bill Robinson. Yes. The NAACP. Oh, yes. And, and so many more. So what I'd like for you to do is to take us on a journey of some of the prestigious awards that were bestowed upon you and what that truly means to you. Well, that is something that you don't strive for, number one, but it's always wonderful to receive it because to me, as I said before, it's, it's sort of like the community is handing you their love in, in the form of a, a plaque. Mm -hmm. And that is so nice to receive, and 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 uh, like there are quite a few, and so I won't mention them. But there, uh, I just love, I love getting them because it means that somehow I have touched the community in some way. And uh, but it's like I said, it's not what you strive for because it's something that um, that you do because you see a need mm -hmm. for it. And you just jump in there. That's I've always kind of done that kind of jumping into stuff, <laughs> and, not, and having and being uh, you know fortunate enough that there was a good outcome. Yes, and look know? how they turned out. Yes. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and it's a way for people to acknowledge the good that you've done. I mean, so much so that you've been recognized on a national level. Essence Magazine. Yes. I mean, come on, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that is, you know, doesn't get any better than that. No, it doesn't. It does. You know, and mm -hmm. you've you've been recognized, so mm -hmm. you are somebody, Miss. Oh wow! Well. <laughs> <laughs> you are somebody, Jean well, Bryant. Know, I just don't feel like uh, I I do feel humble about everything, and you know, it's just I I it, inside I'm shouting, thank you, God. You know, Amen. because to me that's where it all comes from. Amen. And I did want to sort of write a book, and that's what I'm going to stress in it because certainly as I look back over my life, I did not sort of come into this world thinking I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. It just seems like stuff happens. <laughs> he sets it before you. He opens the window. You're so right. And you take that opportunity. Yes. It, it's all him. All exactly. faith. You just, you just move forward by faith. Yes. And mm -hmm. he, he works it out. He does. He, he works really it out. You're the instrument, but he works it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, in all that you've done and all that you've accomplished, have you lived your life dream? I don't know. I, uh, whether it's my life dream, um, I just have a, a, a wish to, to give my best to friends. And, and you know what? There's a little thing about me. I take people to heart and I act in myself. I count them as mine. This is my friend. This is somebody I love. I just love so many people. I, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to handle it. So um, it's. Because your heart is this big. That's why. That's how you exactly. handle it. I just take everybody to heart and uh, I love. I just love what I'm doing. So have I accomplished a dream? Perhaps. Perhaps I don't. I don't dream of this or of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I take what what I get from God, and everything comes from God. I, I, you know, this home. I just praise the Lord every day that you have a home, that I and have it's a, a beautiful home. home. It is beautiful, and I never knew I was gonna. I've always had nice homes. You know, mm -hmm. even growing up, like I said, we weren't, we weren't uh, richy rich as mm -hmm. they say, <laughs> but. Um, 
we always had a nice, comfortable home. And uh, I've, been, I've been very, very fortunate. And I'm the type of person that likes to share what I have, you know, what has made me. And, and as I look back then, I wonder why, why do you do these things? And why, well, there's a, there is one thing why I try to be kind to people because I was bullied in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also a twin. <laughs> but it was funny because I look back now and the bullying was more or less look what I have and that you don't. You yes, know? yes. And at that time, my, my father wasn't in my life either. Mm -hmm. My poor mom had to struggle, you know. But um, anyway, life is good, and I praise the Lord every day for Amen. what he's given me Amen. and I hope that I can be a blessing to others. And you have been, clearly, mm -hmm. you have been. Mm -hmm. Now, not only are you an amazing woman with all that you've done and all that you've accomplished in your lifetime, but to top it off, you're a mother. Yes. You have a family. Let's talk a little bit about your amazing family. Now, you've already told us that your sons played in a band. Yes. What else can you tell us about this amazing family of yours? Well, right, right above you, my mom. Okay. She's the inspiration. Wonderful. She's the inspiration behind everything. She was just so beautiful and so just so amazing. She never raised her voice, you know, and, and uh, I'm a twin and we were brats. <laughs> so spoiled because we were different. We were twins and uh -huh. oh my God, you know, everybody just doted over us. And uh -huh. <laughs> Identical. It's a wonder, it's a wonder I uh, am not selfish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're identical. We're called mirror twins. When you look at, when we look at each other, we're looking in the mirror really because uh -huh. I have, everything's opposite, like I have right. my markings, facial markings. And hers are on the other yes, side. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and we have different personalities. She's the smarty. <laughs> 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 I'm kind of just getting along <laughs> with my, you know, but uh, we, we were really blessed, blessed. We lived in a home that was um, really united. And it's a kind of a home you don't see too much of today because uh, everybody's spread out right and was yeah. that here in pittsburgh no no in in uh, new jersey in new jersey that's my home okay my home state okay yes. and i grew up in roselle new jersey as a matter of fact and the wonderful thing of it is that uh i had three uncles each one had their own home and that was amazing we had i lived on a street where half of the block was <laughs> family <laughs> was your family <laughs> yes, yes yes so when i came to pittsburgh I think I just adopted Pittsburghers because I didn't have that family that I had back in New Jersey. You know, we had aunts, uncles, everybody lived mm -hmm. together. We had about eight people maybe in the same house, but we never stumbled over yes. each other. Yes. It was just everybody knew their place, and it was wonderful, wonderful. And it was family. And it was family. And something that's really lacking in a lot of families today, unfortunately. Unfortunately. You know, there's... there's mm -hmm. Oftentimes, they don't have that privilege. And you know what? I try to incorporate that kind of thing in both programs, the Mr. African American and, Miss, and the Miss Black Teenage, a family type of thing. We would tell each other, you don't have to love someone, but you have to respect them. Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. That's, that's what we did as a family. We respected each other. And uh, I was even allowed my sister. <laughs> We even drew on the walls. It was awful. Oh, my gosh. We have murals. Oh, my gosh. We had murals at home. We should have been <laughs> spanked. <laughs> you know? But your soft-spoken mom. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I'm sure she, she, she held you to task. Yes, certainly, certainly. Absolutely. Now, you've held such a fulfilling life, and you've touched so many people that you probably can't even imagine the people that you've touched. Mm-hmm. I'm certain that they owe you a debt of gratitude. What's next in your life, Jean Bryant? Probably a book. <laughs> All right. And I think, yes. And I think I owe that to myself and my family of friends yes. and people I love so much here. And your fans. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Some people have said, well, when are you going to write this book? Because I can't wait to read it. I, th I can't wait to read it either. <laughs> So hopefully, yes, I've started it. I have. Um, 
I, I got a little um, off course when I had cancer and I had more than one cancer. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm very grateful to God that I'm still here. So you're back on track yes, now. Uh, yeah, I'm back on track, back so on track I'll, be at it, I'll be at it pretty <laughs> soon. <laughs> and maybe you'll be hearing uh, well, a, Then I'll have to come back and exactly. talk to you about the fall. Yes, yes, I'd love yeah, that, I'd you, love you that. You have a lot to do. <laughs> you have a lot to do. Yes, indeed. So what else do you, we need to know about Jean Bryant before well, we close? The only thing left to know about me, I guess, is that I try to keep going no matter what's in front of me, no matter how hard the road is. I try to be an example of to my family and uh, even friends that you just don't give up. That uh, That's why I, I'm not sure that I may have told you that uh, when uh, I was supposed to well, well, you know what people think when you have cancer, you're not yes. supposed to, you know. So maybe they thought I was going to leave this world. <laughs> so uh, there was a nice ceremony given for me and everything. But it was it was supposed to be a surprise. And I didn't know until two days beforehand that it was for me. So I had bought a dress to be buried in when I was diagnosed with uh, cancer. And uh, I wore the dress to testify in at this surprise. You wore the you dress know? to party. Yes, I did. You wore the dress I to party. <laughs> that is that is something. Yes, it is. That is it's something. my testimony to that God, there is a God, and that He'll bring you through. Will. That's he right. He will it's bring his, you through. He, yes. It's, it's mm -hmm. his will, and he'll yes. bring you through. Exactly. So you're destined to be here because there's still great things that you have to do, not only to encourage people that are youngsters, but to write that book. Well, I want to because I think in writing it, it will also encourage people uh, that there is hope and also that uh, listen because God is speaking to you. Yes. And a lot of times when you're moving, you're moving with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that that's, what's, that's how it's been for me because there's just no other way that I could have done any of this because what did I know about any of this? Exactly. But you know, also mm -hmm. in listening to what God has to say, one has to temper their heart yes. to be able to accept what he's saying. Oh, yes. Because if you don't know him, you're not going to know that knock on the door. Isn't that the truth? Because yes. you're not going to know mm -hmm. from where that's coming. Yes, yes, exactly. So in order to be able to do that, you, you, you've got to have some kind of faith and some kind indeed, of belief indeed and then seek that opportunity and when that opportunity knocks take that opportunity yes, exactly. and run with it yes. until another mm -hmm. opportunity comes along mm -hmm. life is trial and error isn't it there's yes, no it there's no book I to tell there is no book <laughs> at least i yes. haven't found no, the book no, no. <laughs> that tell you how to live yes. what to do this that mm -hmm. and the other right. it's just you have to go through as long as you're honest and loving and caring yes and respectful yeah you turn out pretty good I, well <laughs> i think you know like i said i just praise lord and my good mother there <laughs> absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. good old mom yes, absolutely indeed. well maya angelou she wrote that infamous poem phenomenal woman mm -hmm. and jean i must say that you are nothing short of a phenomenal woman. You are that phenomenal woman and I humbly salute you for all that you've done for the children, for all that you've done for the community, and for all that you've done for the city. I thank you. Thank and you. I thank you for being on our show today and showing our young people that there is encouragement out there. Oh, there are people out there mm -hmm. who love them Yes. There are people who care, and if they just seek out those individuals, yes. then it, it help, it'll make their lives a little bit easier. Exactly. They are beautiful. Yes, they are beautiful. And they are somebody. Indeed, indeed, and I see it every day. Even now as I walk around uh, a little uh, older yes. and needy, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they come to my rescue all the time there. Can I help you? And it's like, you're only, you're only about... 20 or 18 and you're just beautiful. I mean, they are. It's beautiful. They are so it's helpful beautiful. to me now in my, uh, what should I say, aging process. 
gracefully. Yes, gracefully. Yes. And, and people are good people indeed anyway, I think. Most people have been very helpful to me. And it's really sad that I have to be in a condition where I need help. But it, we it just, all will get there. Yes. We will all yes, get there. Yes, we, yes. And we all need mm -hmm. a, a helping hand. But it's helped me to see how kind people are. And uh, it's, I'm, just, I'm just so grateful that I was able to be a part of something, a part of a community, and to show them my love and to receive their love. Well, yes. thank you, Jean, so much for being on the show well, and, and showing our audience that you are truly an unsung hero. Aren't you nice? Thank you, Diane. Thank that is you. so sweet. Thank you.